It's new product time. Lady Ada. Yeah. All right, first up, speaking of Raspberry Pi, these are back in stock. This is the Raspberry Pi starter kit with Raspberry Pi. These go very, very fast. We put them in just like less than 24 hours ago. We have a bunch of them. Um, You can get them for 10% off um, with our code. It Um, comes with a pie. It comes with a pie. Um, While supplies last. While supplies last. So that is the Raspberry Pi starter kit. Um, Get them while they're hot. Okay, next up. We have some new photos. Yeah. These are very nice photos. Yeah, we're taking right. photos of all of our stuff over. Um, John Janier is cranking away at these yeah, things. Nice. All right, and then we have? Um, we just have like an, another update for the extrusion stuff. We now have these double corners. So we had corners with one hole, now they have one with two. So they're all stronger. Yeah. They're also good for the uh, doubled up extrusion. Anyways, you know, good stuff to have. Yeah, and what would you use this for? Um, this is for like a CNC project or a robotics project where you want to connect the extrusion, as you can see on the next photo. Yeah. Clicky. Yeah. So this is just a little bit stronger. Maybe we'll put up with a little bit more abuse. Yeah. Anyways. Cool stuff. Yeah. Okay. Next up. Oh, we got the screen. Okay, yeah. so um, the really big physically um, new product is um, we put in the Pixel Chi displays um, like two weeks ago, and those are uh, sort of like a v- daily visible display that's uh, 10 inches. And we also wanted to put in this display that's uh, also 10 inch display. It's not daylight visible, but it's half the price because it doesn't have that extra monochrome layer. Um, it is like a normal TFT, it's an IPS. Uh, in-plane switching, uh, high-resolution display. They're, these are often used for tablets. I think this is originally was spec for tablet use. It does not have a touch screen. Um, working on getting capacitive touch screens at this time, we do not have them. Um, they're actually quite hard to get. Um, but uh, we do have this display that doesn't have a touch screen, but it does have these really nice mounting tabs, which I like. And as you can see, you can uh, view them from any angle. So I will go over here to the overhead, and I will... Um, show off the screen. I'll show off the screen and then I'll turn it on. So this is the screen itself. Um, so you can see there's these mounting tabs. Um, it's quite thin. It's only like five millimeters thick. It has an LED uh, backlight, which is really nice. It has this connector cable, this LVDS connector cable, which goes to the driver board. Um, the driver board can use um, composite. VGA, uh, both the composite NTSC or PAL, uh, VGA input and a little VGA um, HDMI. You can power it from 5 to 24 volts. It has a little um, menu thingy that you can disconnect if you don't want to, but it, um, it's a, an on off and like menu um, thing. Uh, let me see. Let me plug this in. This will... What is iPlane switching, what does that mean? It means that you can see from any angle, so... So iPlane switching means you can see from any angle. Yeah, hold on. Let me turn this on. Hello? Did I power this off? Maybe we turned it off before we... I did turn it off, but... Hold on. Live demo. Okay, well we can always come back to it after you turn it on. I don't know what happened. It's just working. I must have pressed something button and maybe unplugged something. Um, okay, we'll come back to it. We had it plugged in before the. Yeah. Uh, we had it plugged in for the. Uh, right before the show. We did have it working. Oh no, I forgot. Okay, I will get it working. Maybe we'll move to the next item and then I'll, I'll figure out what I unplugged. Okay. Incorrectly. Next up. Oh, uh, humidity sensor. Yeah, this is. Um, we have a bunch of temperature humidity sensors, but I really like this one because it's I squared C, and the other humidity sensors we've had. Um, they're usually like a one wire protocol, um, or we have a soil one, but it's like waterproof soil. This is kind of a more basic one that's I squared C, and um, it comes in a really nice character, which I can show in the overhead because nothing has to be turned on. So um, it comes with this cable, and this is sort of like a, a plastic um contact, uh, sorry, a plastic um, kind of foam thing. It's not weatherproof, like it doesn't say it's weatherproof or waterproof, but you know, you can put it outside. It's got this nice potting compound. Um, I'd say this is much more rugged and we have some example code for it. And it's it's got a DS18B20 um, use of sensor. And then for the uh, humidity sensor, there's a capacitive sensor inside. So, so what would you use this for? Um, this is good for like, if you want to do temperature humidity sensing outdoors and stuff. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. And I got a couple. Of, I'll go to the photos of it real quick while you're playing around over there. Oh wait, now it's working. I don't know. I just, I just power cycled it. Okay. Yeah. You want to go right. back to the display? Yeah. Sorry. Let's go that. back to the display. I don't know what I did. I just like turned it on and then it didn't work. I think I had the power supply switched on. Yeah, we have a new um, Ask an Engineer table, and it has power outlets in it, so I think I know, we must have I'm, unplugged I'm still, it and plugged it in. I'm still learning what cable is here. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyways, everything's great. Um, so I have it connected up to my Pi, and um, this is the display, so I just want to show the wide Yeah, even angle. over a webcam, you can see that it's viewable at any angle. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, like, at a certain point, like, your eyes are like, well, wow. I can not see that much, but you don't get that weird... But like with cheaper TFTs, it inverts yeah. where you can't see it. So it'd be well. good for um, like an arcade project with a Pi. Yeah, this could be really good for like arcade video display. It's got kind of a nice widescreen um, image. It's got like you know a really beautiful. Um, yeah, even over screen. a web, even over our webcams, you can see how sharp it is. Normally, when you look at screens through these um, cameras. Um, you can't see anything on the screen, so that's pretty impressive. You can see even from an angle, there's no color distortion. I mean, it's 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 distorted because it's at an angle, but it's not um, color distorted. And um, yeah, it's got a really nice white backlight, super bright. And you can put a reflector on the back to make it even a little bit brighter. Oh, really? Well, you use like foil or something. Yeah, so that the light and that'll even be brighter. Back. That's cool. Um, so it's really thin and it's, and it's really really bright. And I really like these displays. I've tried a couple displays. Um, yeah, it does have a touch screen. Yeah. Uh, we're working on getting touch screens. And what's the resolution? This is 1280 by 800. Okay. So that's pretty much as high as you can get for a 10 inch display. Um, this is a, a standard sort of tablet. And what's display. the backlight in this? How does it, what's the backlight it, it's, technology? Uh, it's all white LEDs, so there's white LEDs around the edges, mm -hmm. and then there's this really hardcore diffuser that diffuses it very evenly. I mean, these are used in. I mean, I don't know exactly which model of, of, of laptop or tablet, but they're used in um, tablets and laptops. This yeah. Is what this display was used for originally. Um, but it would be really great for any kind of embedded project. Um, I'm using it with the Pi, but you can use it with anything that has HDMI, VGA, or composite output, which is, like, pretty much everything. Yeah. With the trend of embedded Linux computers, like the BeagleBone and the uh, Pi, um, I think we'll see these type of displays used a lot more by hobbyists. Yeah. So that's cool. It's definitely, this is really easy if you have it plugged in right to uh, use it. And then there's like a menu. Yeah. Which I can just pop up really fast. So there's like, you know, brightness, contrast. Um, that's a pretty nice menu. Saturation. And you're, okay. Yeah. You can like do all sorts of stuff. Functions, auto off. Um, blue screens, sleep modes, uh, display ratio if you want to do 4x3 instead of 16x9. Um, you can also um, reverse the display and stuff. I don't know hmm. what you would need to do that for, but um, burn and stuff. Anyways, all sorts of settings. So, yeah, super easy to use. Very cool. Nice display. Okay. Just, for, just remember to turn it on. Yeah, it that. requires power. Oh, far, far. Turn, turns out. Okay. All right. That's my demo. Uh, next up. Here is the bare conductive. Yeah, so this is the stuff that we were showing the, the video uh, um, that Becky did. And, um, and there's a pen and there's paint. Yeah, we have a couple Very different fun. technologies. So let's just show them really fast over here. Yeah, I mean, that photo is really good too. But we also um, okay. have it around. live. So the... Um, the bare conductive comes with in a tub, and uh, it's just kind of like a goopy paint. Um, it kind of it's like a paint, and you can use a paintbrush with it. Um, you can silk screen it as well if you're just silk screening. Um, you also have it as a pen. Um, the pen is kind of you know it's not a ballpoint. It's sort of like a, a hollow plastic pen, so you squeeze the ink out. And then we have um, these really cute little cards um, that you can make with the bare conductive ink and then a little battery and then some LEDs so that when you close it, like... Could the conductive paint pens be used as conductive adhesive? They're not super gluey. I mean, they are an adhesive um, just because they are, uh, you know, they are a little goopy, but um, they're... Is it like fabric paint? 
would you say? Consistency? Yeah, it's like fabric paint. It's, it's like, you know, it, it will glue like glitter or something, but it's not. I wouldn't use it to glue two things together yeah. uh, in a permanent fashion. But yeah, so they are. They are. It is conductive. So it comes with, um, we have three different things. We have these little kits that blink, um, top, and a pen. A little out of focus there. Maybe you can yeah. pull something up to the camera. Hello. Sometimes there you go. Okay. Yeah, we have the tab. Um, the pen is kind of what I would suggest people start with because, or the or the cards, because the cards actually come with some projects. But the pen is just like it's ten dollars, really easy. This is if you want to do like silk screening and stuff. I, I feel uh, like it's a lot. couple questions. Someone wants to know if they can use this to fix elastometric keypads that they've lost their carbon. Yeah, I mean, I believe this is a carbon-based ink. I don't know exactly. Um, I mean, it might work. I don't, I don't know. I've never, like, fixed. Um, I know usually silver paint is what they are used mm -hmm. to fix keyboards. Um, I mean, it might work. It's a little mm -hmm. goopy. And what's the dry time estimate on this, you think? I think it says so. I think it takes, like, 10, 15 minutes. Yes, yeah, I think it was 15, 20 minutes max, depending yeah, on how much you Yeah, I think it depends on the community and stuff. You can check the um, the product page, the data yeah. sheet. I like to like so, the data sheet. Someone in the chat said they painted circuit pass for speakers that he mounted on his wall. That's cool. Yeah, you can do it. Not going to be very loud speakers, but it's it will work. The neighbors will like it because it won't be so loud. Yes. That's cool. Um, I think it, it is a little bit resistant. Yeah. Resistant. And then we had, I guess you want, you want to show this? this yeah, is, This sure. is from, uh, I guess we can go to the overhead on um, this. It's actually, it's kind of I'll just hold it up. So yeah. this is um, a Flora, and it, this is kind of... A it, Flora you, controller, yeah. It's used sort of as, uh, not adhesive, but um, I think she probably glued or taped the Flora down and then um, used the bare conductive and sort of glued over the pads. Yeah. Um, and like, I, you know, I don't think this is holding the flora down. I think the floor is taped on the bag or something, but, or used like spray, um, spray adhesive, but you know, it will stick to the pads. Um, and so this was a little like, you yeah. know, game controller that you can make. You can also, you know, like the um, fellow who was on the show and tell, you can make a little um, instrument or something and have, um, you know, MIDI come out. Okay. couple questions that folks have. Uh, do you know the resistance length? Uh, how, how far? There, there's a, that's in the data sheet for sure. Oh, great. It's in the data yeah. sheet. Okay. And then uh, what is electrical noise and how can it be reduced? Maybe that's one for later. That's not that, yeah. Uh, yeah, save that one for later. Um, uh, Right after we're done with new products. And here's here's a demo of it with the LEDs. Okay. I want to go over to the yeah, overhead. Sure okay. Where's the overhead? It's too dark to see, but there's two battery holders in series with um, two pink LEDs. This is good. This is great for workshops, especially for like young folks That's who want to easy. who want to see how electricity works. You can just paint it on there. That's yeah. kind of cool. Okay. Very neat. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got uh, this is one of my favorite new products of all time. This is a kind of a classic, I think, cool Adafruit product. ITO. Lady Ada, what is ITO? Um, ITO is a clear conductive liquid that can be dried onto plastic or glass. Um, most common is used with uh, pet plastic, which is this flexible plastic. It can also be used with glass. So, um, I have uh, two pieces here. Um, this is the glass. There's no light here. What do you want? Uh, there's no way to get any more light here. Um, I, I can if you want me to move really fast. Yeah, can you show me the exit? I sure. don't know if it's going to be visible to see the. Uh, usually we have a light over here, I thought. We can bring one of the. Uh, next time we can bring one of the. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's so much better. Okay. Yay. Okay, that's like super visible now. Um, yeah, because I have a, a multimeter here, and um, so if you put on resistance, it's visible. You can measure the um, resistance of the ITO, and it's about like 15 ohms per inch. Um, can you that uh, On the multimeter? Yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, there you go. So this is about like 34 ohms. So it's not like, you know, it's not going to be like a short circuit. It's going to be um, quite, uh, quite resistive. 
Um, it's used for signal usually, not power, but for um, small uses of like LED lighting, or if you want to do like capacitive touch sensing. Yeah, this is considered a short. Um, it's only coated on one side. So like this side is coated, but this side is not. And that's normal. It's um, pretty rare to get glass that's coated on both sides. Um, you can use this to make, um, like if you're doing projects at home, if you want to make your own uh, EL or if you want to make your own um, OLEDs, like because you're you know, studying optoelectronics and you have um, the materials usually you use, this is a substrate that's pretty common. LCDs also uses as a substrate. Um, passive touch often uses this as a substrate. Um, so, you know, you can pattern it. Um, usually it's patterned um, by photoresist. It's probably too difficult for most people to do it at home. Uh, you may be able to use a laser cutter. You can definitely use um, the flat edge of a knife or tweezers. Yeah. Um, so I have a pair of tweezers here. Yeah, and here's, a, gone. here's an example right here. here. You yeah. It's glass. So you can... Um, you can scrape away with um, maybe these tweezers aren't sharp enough. Yeah, but like, you can uh, scrape away a line. You know, scrape. You know, if you're if you're using a ruler, you can scrape a line, or you can use like a laser um, cutter or any other kind of like a sharp tool. Um, I don't know. A mill probably wouldn't work. Again, usually these are use are photo patterned on, so it, it's not like the easiest thing in the world to use, but it's definitely something that. You know, with a little bit of experimentation, I think people come up with some uh, ways to pattern it. Once you pattern it, you can use it just like uh, any conductive substrate. So you could put chips and resistors and capacitors on it and glue them down. Um, a little bit of super glue and then maybe use uh, silver ink or um, you know, the bare conductive paint. So for example, here is um, the pet. The pet's a little easier to work with, um, but it's more resistive. Yeah. It's a trade-off. So this is um, a piece of pet plastic with um, a line down the center, um, so it's uh, resistive this way. Yeah. Can, uh, can you help me? Yeah, sure. What do you want? Can you hold this up? Yeah. And you don't have three hands, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Thank you. So it's resistive this way. but like 100 ohms or so. And then it's resistive this way, also about 100 ohms or so. Um, but it's not resistive across here um, once you've made the cut in the, in the plastic. And then you can use um, a battery such as this one with alligator clips. Let's see if I got the battery right here. Yeah. So oh, yeah. you can use this to um, I just, I just glued down this uh, LED with uh, bare conductive paint and then I'm using the resistivity of the ITO as sort of like a resistor. So you have um, like a, a transparent material with an LED embedded yeah. in it. You could do some really amazing art with the stuff. Yeah, so it's an interesting material. Um, the pets, again, a lot easier to work with. Um, the ITO on glass is, you know, it's much more clear, it's more translucent. Um, this has like a 95% Translucency and this is like it's glass, so it's, it's like pretty much yeah. really transparent. So it depends on what effect you're looking for. Um, it's not meant again; it's not meant to carry a lot of current, but I think you know it, it's very resistive. Um, I wouldn't use it with more than like 12 volts or so. I wouldn't try to pass more than like 100 milliamps through it. Maybe, maybe okay. if you're really pushing it, you could probably spike it up to 500 milliamps. But it's actually not meant for high current applications. It's mostly meant for sensing, maybe you could do a couple yeah. of these. I've seen some um, really beautiful uh, glass tables that uh, they had LEDs kind of suspended in it. Yeah. That was kind of neat. Like you can do all sorts of neat stuff with this. Yeah. Um, normally if you have something clear um, to see through, you can have an LED as some type of status indicator, so. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's kind of interesting. Um, you can't solder to ITO. Uh, it's, this is plastic and glass and the film is like, you know, microns thick, but you can use alligator clips. You can use the um, conductive copper tape with conductive adhesive. If it has conductive adhesive, you can just tape the tape on. You can solder the tape. Or you yeah. can solder the tape and then tape it on. It's probably yeah. better because you're less likely to melt the plastic. Um, and of course, alligator clips work, work really well for with both the glass and the uh, plastic ITO. Yeah, and what's neat is it's um, it's conductive, so you can use it as some type of um, like an input device. 
Yeah, so if you want to use it with like, you know, capacitive touch, that, that, that's a, an excellent use for the stuff because um, it's conductive. That's what they do use for most capacitive touch buttons is, is ITO on uh, plastic or glass. Yeah. Yep. Cool stuff. Okay. So hopefully... In our materials section. Yes, yeah, so this is kind of a weird thing. I, I worked with this in, um, in an optoelectronics lab, but uh, it's really hard to get outside of labs, so I'm really happy that we have yeah. this stuff um, in both plastic and glass types. Okay. Next up... A box of wires. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you, well, I guess I can demo this, but yeah, it's basically just wires in a box. Um, there's six spools of 24, or sorry, 25 foot long wire, solid core, 22 American wire gauge. We have for breadboarding. It's kind of cute because it has these holes in it, and so you can pass the wires through. And then um, it's kind of like a little wire holder. It's kind of handy because that way you're not stacking the spools on your desk. And I'll, I'll just hold it yeah. up. It's actually easier to show this way. Yeah, little wire spools Here, and uh let me go to the bigger screen huh? Yeah, you can there you, go. you can open up and there's a they're on a little roller and then uh, this is kinda nice because when you need it you can just pull more wire out. Oh so easy. So yeah. lovely. It comes in all the most common colors. I don't know. It's cute. I like yeah, it. I feel like it's super handy. I want it on my desk now. Okay. Next up. Pixels. Pixels. Yeah. Is that really? We went through everything? Yeah, we went through everything. Wow. This is the last product. Okay, so the Pixels. Luckily, these have been on all this time, and so I know they work. Um, the Pixels are basically the same as the Flora Neo Pixels that we're using, but um, instead of being sewable, they're kind of breadboard friendly. Um, and this is just a simple demo um, to show they're chainable. It's the same as the photo. And the colors are cycling. Breadboard friendly Neo Pixels. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So um, in each LED, there's a little driver. It uses a one wire sort of Manchester encoding. Um, we have a great and very easy to use Arduino library. Um, it won't be usable by uh, like a Raspberry Pi or anything that doesn't have very, very precise timing. Yeah. But it is usable for, by an Arduino and uh, any other microcontroller pretty much. So you can use with a propeller. I think somebody wrote a propeller library for this, for this chip. Um, picks, you know, AVRs, stuff like that. Um, they're really cute because there's only one wire to connect from one yeah. pixel to the other. You can chain pretty much as many as you want. Basically, it's how much RAM you've got and the Arduino. I think 500 is kind of where it starts to max out on the Arduino. Um, but you can always go to Omega and add more. Um, we also have these in like flexi strip. But I thought it might be handy to have them, you know, so you could have individual ones. I don't know. Yeah. And you know, they're they're on this little thin PCB. Um, I also put, uh, the way I designed the circuit board is I put a little resistor on them so you can drive them from, uh, you can power them from 5 to 9 volts. So you can, because they're constant current, they can be powered from a whole bunch of batteries without worrying about, like, frazzling yeah. them. Yeah, that's handy. Yeah. So you can potentially do a lot. Yeah, I mean, you can do more and, you, you know, you don't have to worry about the voltage drop yeah. over a long uh, course of wire, just use yeah. a higher voltage. That's the most asked question. People are like, what type of power do I need to power X number of LEDs? Yeah, I, 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 I did that with the floor pixels too. The floor pixels also have this resistor so you can drive them from up to 9 volts DC. Unfortunately, the flexi strip we don't make, and so um, yeah. I'm going to ask them to make it with the resistor so you can drive it from higher voltages, but we'll see. Okay. Well, that's new products.